So our next presentation fits into that well, inclusion, diversity, and Penny is Leanne. Yeah, I didn't see her back there. I like, and uh, tough act to follow because you, oh, you don't have you don't have kids with you, right? So oh. yeah. No, next time I'll have to bring some students. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight to provide an update about our inclusion, diversity, and social emotional learning strategy. Uh, we're excited to be here. Lee is joining me. You may know Lee. I'm sure many of you do. She was our facilitator uh, throughout this process, so thank you to you for your leadership and guidance. And also thank you to Dow, who financially sponsored this work uh, and provided us with some grant money for some ongoing development. So our journey began uh, at the start of the school year in August when Mr. Sherrill invited Dr. Amy Beasley and Rob Valentine, both from Dow, to our opening session. And they shared their lived experience. They shared their stories with us and asked us to consider those through the lens of inclusion and diversity. And it was really a powerful moment to launch this journey that we're now on in developing a more inclusive school community. So from that moment, we asked teachers to express interest in serving on this inclusion and diversity team and interest in traveling with our group to New York City, where we participated in a WE Day. We heard a little bit about WE just a minute ago. The WE organization is a, a wonderful partner of ours. In addition to that WE Day experience, we also engaged in a session where we learned about the power of storytelling and sharing your own experience. And then we dug in to build the strategy, or at least the initial foundational pieces of our vision and strategy. Uh, so that was a really wonderful opportunity. Our team came back to Midland and continued to meet over the course of the school year, where we learned together, we laughed together, we cried together, uh, and we really started to understand the depth of the task before us in building out this strategy and plan of work. Our steering team is a group of phenomenal educators. You heard from uh, several of them tonight. Pam joined us as well. And so a big thank you to them because they didn't just dedicate their time and energy to this, but they've really made a commitment to being learners, lifelong learners, and joining in this journey, committing themselves to uh, helping us build a more inclusive community. We know this work has just started, but we're really proud of the work that this team has launched for us. I've mentioned storytelling a couple of times. Talk about going out of your comfort zone. Uh, it's become a really important thread in our work. It, again, it started with our opening session. It continued with our New York experience. And then Lee has encouraged each of us over the course of our sessions this year to share our own stories. And I think what we've come to understand is that when you are vulnerable enough to share your story and that you uh, are really, the others are really open to hearing it, that it can create a really amazing learning experience and it provides a really authentic human connection to others uh, to create greater understanding. So we intend to incorporate storytelling throughout our plan of work and uh, no doubt that you'll all be encouraged to participate when the time is right for that. So that takes us to our vision. There's no doubt that hearing the stories of others throughout our work really had a, an important um, influence in creating our vision statement, which is everyone in our school community is valued, safe, treated with kindness and respect and works together to make our community and world a better place. It's a pretty powerful statement. Um, we want you to know that while it's not explicit, when we say everyone, we mean everyone. We are considering this work through the lens of race, ethnicity, culture, gender, ability, socioeconomic status, sexual orientation, gender identity, and all other factors that we should consider in the range of human differences. We carefully selected these words, and we won't go through all of that tonight, but I do want to draw your attention to the word valued. We use valued because it goes beyond tolerance and acceptance. It really moves us into a space of understanding and appreciating one another's differences and strengths and diverse perspectives. 
and in altering, and it helps us in altering our own perspective about others, ourselves, and the world around us. We feel this is really a strong and compelling vision statement for our work. So you might have noticed that our, our strategy is called inclusion and diversity and social emotional learning. And that was an interesting piece of our journey as well. As we really dug into this, we realized there are so many natural connections being specific to the world of education. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that this overarching strategy really embraced the work that we know needs to be done and some of those uh, pieces that are just inherent to our school system. That's where we came to the social emotional learning connection. The Michigan Department of Education recently released the social emotional learning competencies, um, which is that circular graph with the multicolors um, around the wheel. And these are indicators uh, for social emotional learning success. And they're very compelling when you think about them in alignment with social emotional learning, or excuse me, with inclusion and diversity. For example, the competency of relationship skills calls for students to have the ability to establish and maintain healthy and rewarding relationships with diverse individuals and groups. It includes clearly communicating, listening, listening actively, cooperating, negotiating conflict constructively, and seeking and offering help when needed. And that's just one of the statements from that competency list. MDE also recently released their whole child model, which is that other circular graphic. And we're just emerging in our understanding of how best to use this whole child model. But it represents the cognitive, physical, behavioral, and social emotional dimensions of a learner. And we really believe this will provide a strong companion framework for our IND and SEL work. And then finally, I'm sure you all recognize that middle graphic. That is the learner profile from IB. It became very clear to most of our, all of our members, uh, and they became very vocal about the connections to IB, the learner profile, the common language, and the call to action that is really prevalent throughout that IB learner experience. So these three uh, have, will have a heavy influence, you'll see, in the strategy that we've developed. And as we further build out the plan of work, these components will be critical to that. So before I turn it over to Lee, I just want to say as we coalesce all these elements into a strategy, it has become really clear that this will be a living document. This will be an ongoing process, uh, and we need to treat it as such. It's a journey that will, will require all of us to be learners. No individual holds all the answers, or knows all the research, or represents all the perspectives that we need to accomplish this work. As we learn, we'll adjust the plan, and we need to have a very inclusive mindset that's framed in growth, in courage, in courteous goodwill or grace, uh, and with an understanding that we don't have all the answers, but we will find all the answers together. So Lee is now going to take us through what I know everyone really wants to hear, which are really the nuts and bolts of our overarching strategy and our pillars of excellence. Absolutely. So it's kind of fun to be on this side instead yeah, of that right. side. <laughs> I think that's the first time for me for a while. So what I want to do is kind of talk to you a little bit about how we developed the strategy. And along with this came a lot of work that came around in the region as well as nationally and some other projects that we've been working on. And one of the things we realized as we started this, particularly in a school system, as we were starting to do the same thing in communities and with for-profit companies and non-profit companies, is we realized that there was a common thread to the strategy. So we stepped back and started talking about what that model could look like and what things were similar. So you get another pretty giant picture in front of you. But uh, I think it's important to walk through that because it very much drove the strategy that we created for IND that, that I'll share with you in just a minute. So if you look at that very pretty orange color up on the left-hand corner, it says inclusive leadership. And we realized as we walked through the strategy and started the development, not only here but in other places, that it was really important to have a strong leadership component and support at all levels. So you being the leaders from the board perspective would, will be part of that as administratively there will be a connection and further on down throughout the system. And when we looked at that, we realized we really had to have a strong vision that everybody could, um, could buy into. The IND team that we took and brought back from New York 
involves having one um, teacher from every single school as well as some administrators. And they worked pretty diligently to create that strategy that Penny just talked about. And uh, she said she wouldn't share the, the details with you, but I will tell you, it took a while to get there. In fact, even in the last month or two, we added one more word, and that was the word safe because we felt it was so critically important to have that in there too. So again, it is a, you know, it is a revolving process and something that we'll continue to do. But not only under leadership do we look at vision, but we also look at understanding. And, and here's what we learned. Many of us don't really understand what inclusion and diversity is, and we don't understand what social emotional learning is and why it's important. And sometimes it's embarrassing to say that we don't understand a term and we don't know how to call somebody something. Are they African American, are they black? Are they Caucasian, are they white? Um, do we call somebody by their, their born birth name or do we have them make up a nickname because it's easier for us? So there's all kinds of things that bring about really difficult conversations and what we find is that most people um, are afraid to just ask or to have those conversations. So having that common understanding we knew was really critical at the, at the forefront. And then all of that culminates into what I would call a business strategy, which I'm gonna share with you in, in just a minute. And so we knew those were really, really important foundational items. If you look to the right to the green, we also know that we can't implement inclusion and diversity or social emotional learning without having a really strong culture in the organization that supports it. I came from a different school district just a few minutes ago where I was working on culture a little bit. And what I found is that um, they, they implemented a really strong culture code starting at a very young age in their elementary programs. And as I met with middle school students the day prior, I could see that culture and that code of conduct and those ethics very well displayed because they implemented in kindergarten or earlier. When I interviewed parents and coaches and people outside of the district, what I heard was, these kids are so polite. They treat each other with respect. Teachers treat each other with respect. Um, the kids treat other buildings and schools with respect. And what I found is that culture is so critical at a young age to come through the system. So we know that we have to work on an inclusive culture at a young age and transcend that up through the grades so that it's just part of what they do all the time. So we are in the process of building a culture component into that strategy. We also know that we have to have a code of behaviors that go with that culture because culture is defined by what people see and what they do. And so defining that and having the accountability to that is important. You know, we're a public school system, so we can't define what people believe in. We can't challenge their values. We can tell people what's appropriate and, and that idea of modeling respect and care and kindness is, is truly important and that needs to happen. So out of this came a really, really cool thing. We talked about kindness a lot and you heard Karen and Kim talk about kindness and all the different things that they talked about. We did a ton of research on kindness and we realized that it had to be a fundamental component to that value system that comes out of that culture code. And this group came up with a great brand and it's called hashtag keep it kind. And since then, as we've taken this forward, we have hashtag keep it kind Midland, we can have hashtag keep it kind Saginaw, we can have it hashtag keep it kind Wisconsin. So it's really taken some momentum as we start to kind of take this out a little bit. But there's a whole goal around that alone. The purple stands for social emotional learning and well-being, and Penny's talked a lot about it, so I'm not going to go into this one as, uh, as deeply involved, but this would suffice to say that we have a lot of kids that come to school maybe not being completely ready for learning. Maybe they're hungry. Maybe they had a bad experience the night before. And we're just beginning to learn that um, what the impact of that is when you can't come to school fully um, engaged because of other circumstances. If you're a teacher and you're stressed or you've been up to, too long the night before or any of the myriads of, of difficulties that, that people have in their lives, we have to put an emphasis on mental health. And this was probably the area that we learned the most about because when we first put the strategy together, it didn't have a wellness component to it. 
and we all felt like something was missing. So the intent is if, if we have all of our stakeholders coming to school with their very best self, they will be able to work with other people very in a, in a better way as well. So we look at that as having mental health. We look at it as having wellness initiatives, having that social-emotional learning part that starts at an early age and coalesces through all grades, and looking at components such as positive psychology that many of the staff, and I know Pam on your board, and there may be others, have, have had some training in as well. If we look outside of Midland Public Schools, um, there are hundreds of models where this emphasis on social emotional learning and health and wellness and mental health have changed complete districts around and in, in, including complete towns. If you look at the Harlem School District in New York, that is a classic example. And now you look at how much all of that um, emphasis has changed their culture completely in that area. So we've added that in, we're excited about that. And finally, the last piece is education advocacy and education. We know that regardless of whether you are a school system or you are a church or you're a company or you're a community, you have to look at policy. And so looking at what, what those policies and those rules are and uh, anti-discrimination, all those types of things, and what are those actions that we want to embrace that, that approve or um, help us look at what a positive, inclusive culture could be are really important because people need to see that to know that we stand behind our actions. So that's a significant part of it. That even um, transcends down to little tiny things like classroom roles, where I earlier announced and talked a little bit about, you know, is it important enough for us to call somebody by their true name or because we just don't want to learn how to pronounce it, we're just going to go with a nickname instead. It's using the right language, right? Um, is it he, she? Is it something different? What are pronouns? It's all of that being respectful and kind and acknowledging all the different diversities that we have. We also know that people need to be educated and we need to have resources. So we have a huge educational component built in. And finally, it's the glue that holds it all together. It's communication. So having a really good communication plan. So that's probably more than you wanted to hear on that model. So I'm going to move to some of the funner stuff. Um, this is a, a diagram, so you get a lot of colorful diagrams today, of our IND implementation infrastructure. And what we learned right off the bat is that it's not enough to just have one teacher per school implementing this. So we've had to rethink what this structure looks like a little bit, and this is our new structure. And I'm guessing it might change again. So let me kind of walk you through that because the fonts are a little bit small. The core IND team includes several administrators. Pam is on board as a board member. And it also has one teacher from every school. What we realized is those teachers needed a little bit more support. So we've now included a principal from each one of those schools as well and some more administrative staff. So that builds that component up. We also realized that we were missing some pretty strong components. And that was parents and the community at large as well as students. So we've got a couple of advisory teams that have been added. One is a parent community advisory team and one is a student advisory team. Because if I've learned anything in this process, either through Midland Public Schools or outside with other districts, our students have a lot to say. And they want to be part of the solution. So having them involved is, is really important. We also realize that there will be, at times, which you've experienced as well, issues that come up that are big that you have to deal with. And we really felt that it was important to have an emergent issues team that could quickly and nimbly react and think about how we handle it when something comes outside of the reins of our normal operations that might challenge our inclusion and diversity principles. We also looked at having an admin council connection because we know it's, it's absolutely critical as we're looking at everything from advocacy to policies that we have to have everybody at every level of the organization understanding and that our, our top administrators need to buy in and uh, bring this down. And that includes all of you as board members as well. And finally, as we developed our strategy, we came up with five core pillars. And we ended up calling them our centers of excellence that we really wanted to be um, considered 
somebody that was excellent in each of those, those five pillars. And so we have five multidisciplinary project teams looking at each one of those areas, and I'll share the areas with you next. But we feel like this integrated kind of approach um, will take care of everything. Now, we may end up adding another bullet at some point, but um, that seems to be working pretty well so far. <clears throat> I've been talking for seven straight days and I'm starting to lose my voice. So I apologize, I'm right at the tail end. So this is our strategy. I'm not gonna read every single goal in action, but I will tell you it's got five different separate pillars or five cores of excellence as we call them. And the first is around culture and communication. So it lines up exactly with that model that we talked about earlier. And some of the goals that we have in the first probably three to five years of this plan are to create, maintain, and communicate a culture and values. That takes a while. We have to start at the top and we have to transcend that culture through the organization and cement the values down through all levels of the organization with all stakeholders. It's also looking at communication plans and looking at that common language for all stakeholders so we build that as part of the culture and looking at um, the practices and guidelines and policies so that those types of things fall under culture and communication. Under well-being, we already have a number of initiatives that are already starting, and we don't want to start from scratch. We want to build on the wonderful things that are already happening. So that includes implementing and integrating the wellness committee initiatives, looking at the school mental health work group and some of the things that they're doing, and integrating positive psychology, and then continuing to research and develop um, through all levels, IND, and, and SEL practices and how they work into curriculum and the work that's being done. Because we certainly don't want this to be just another thing that people have to do. We know that that's tough. The third one is education and resources and it includes a variety of different educational components, things that people can get 24 seven online and things that um, people can participate in. And I think Penny, if she didn't, talked a little bit about uh, wherever she is, there she is. Ta she, if she hasn't, she will talk a little bit about a kickoff um, for teachers that will come at the beginning of the next school year. Finally, the kindness movement. Um, has quite a lot of energy around it, and we're excited to kind of kick that off. So we're, we're finishing up the stages of developing a plan, platform around that and what that could look like, and how we um, have it appropriate for every grade level. And the last one is service learning. Because if we do a really, really good job of putting all these components together, and most school systems have some type of a mission or vision that talk about um, students acquiring the skills and the attitudes that they need to help make a difference both in their own communities but in the world, then we will integrate a service learning component into this so people can do things locally as well as globally. And uh, that would be, would be the intent there. So we'll come full. For, Full circle, excuse me. So that's our strategy. We've got a couple of things to do next, only a couple. Uh, we will work with teams to further define the plan of work. And what you don't see today, and everybody in the audience is going to say, thank God for that, <laughs> but you don't see the seven pages plan of work that go with each of those five pillars. So right, we're right in the middle of working with all of the teams to develop those strategies. And those should be done probably in the next month or two. We also will continue some focused learning with IND teacher teams and leaders and continue to research and use um, whatever research we need and we're learning it on a, on a regular basis so that we can continue to change things as new um, initiatives come out, new best practices play out. We want to implement an infrastructure to kind of increase collaboration, engagement, and voice so everybody can share ideas that work. So you saw just a snapshot of that with the culture teams today. And I know some of the comments were, boy, how can we get those into other schools? We need to encourage that sharing so all of those types of activities get shared across, um, across the way. And there is a plan for a number of these um, learning engagements to be integrated into 2019 professional learning. And finally, I'm really happy and excited to report that we have an opportunity to take a cohort to Kenya 
in July, and Dow will be sponsoring that for us as well, the Dow Foundation, and they want to use our initial work as the best practice. So we will be taking Penny and a couple of other folks um, to Kenya for about 10 days and sharing what we've learned and working with experts from U of M and all over the world to help define our path forward even more so. So we're really excited about this. It's just unveiling and it'll be a great time for us to share some best practices. So that's it, just a little bit about what we've been up to and I would just open it up for questions if anybody has any. Absolutely, thanks uh, Penny and Lee. Do we have any questions? That was a lot. That is a lot. I'm sorry. It's a lot to digest. Yes. But um, I appreciate the slides all there that we can we can go back and reflect on it. I was taking notes as you were going to. It's just um, really extraordinary what you have accomplished in a year and, and that you have, you know, that vision going forward. So I guess I'll echo what Mary just said. Thank you for the wonderful update and I know it's been a long journey, and I'm looking. I know this journey is never going to be done. Um, it's something that we can work towards in perpetuity. So I'm excited to see the progress that we make. Um, I guess, what do you need from the board? Um, one of the things that resonated with me. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I guess one of the things that resonated with me that you brought up was was the the well-being and especially around mental health. Um, Absolutely. Especially with budget timing coming up, I was wondering about your thoughts on that. I don't know if we have a solution for all of that because it's pretty big and broad. I will say that there are some huge community initiatives going on around mental health, and they will um, a number of things will be unveiling probably in the next three months to six months, and we will have an opportunity, I think, to partake in um, some research and programs that will help look at the mental health of our entire region, which will be great. But I do think it needs to be on the forefront for all of you as board members. As people are asked to do more and more and more, our teachers become more stressed, our administrators become more stressed, our students become more stressed. And mental health is going to play a pretty big impact. And, and we're looking at the data, and I think we're, we're just finding out right now that there are just huge tolls and impacts on people when, when they're not well, both physically and mentally. And it sounds like it's one of those soft things that we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't have to deal with. But, but it's so integral to what we have, so we have to. It's important. I think the other thing for all of you is to really support the vision and to be part of the culture and part of the culture change. One of the things on um, resources, um, Phil, we kind of attended a meeting today where we were potentially going to get some money for a grant to support a position that we've been looking at for a while. We've also um, began to look inside because there's never new money and it's prioritizing your present money mm -hmm. um, of some positions that we have that could maybe be... Um, changed, I guess is what we would say, to do that. And Penny's trying to figure out how that fits, the dollars fits a little bit. Uh, we're going to scramble to get there quickly for this budget, but we're kind of at least got them pegged to move some of those resources towards that. So you are moving some of your resources as well as we chase some grant resources, as well as tonight you're going to see um, there's some dollars given to us from Dow um, that you're accepting in, in the, under the major change proposals as well. You want to add anything, Penny? Or? No, that was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just want to say, as being a part of this process, um, from from start to where we are right now, it's been so collaborative, and our um, to have representation from every building, to have administrators as a part of this team was really uh, important and integral to to the work that we did, and having Penny and Lee lead us through that and keep us organized and coming up with the strategic plan it, uh, was no small feat. But um, the thing I love about it is it took all the information, it took everybody's input from each one of these buildings and, and that's so important in creating a strong plan. And when, when Lee talks about how important it is now to have more people within the buildings. You can't just have one, right? We, it, you, need, you need a whole team. 
and we here at the board table can be our team and the administrators, but we need everybody involved to really um, move this initiative forward and, and embrace it. Uh, if we do that, I feel like this will be a, a wonderful success and our whole community will do well with it. The other thing is I believe that there's pieces of this plan that aren't just Midland Public Schools, but our communities. I don't think a solution is just Midland Public Schools. Uh, we have to reach out to our parents. We have to reach out to our neighbors, our friends, and, and really... Um, learn and educate ourselves and create that culture of kindness um, beyond just our school building. So uh, the more we can collaborate uh, to do that, the better. I have uh, great respect for Dow for offering their support in this journey and, um, and I hope our community sees that we are working hard at doing the best we can to move forward in a positive direction and, and really create something great for our community and our schools. Thank you so much. You're welcome.